is, which means you guys get an extra live stream. Please feel free to ask a question. Please subscribe. Please leave a comment. Um, and check out the podcast. You know, this is kind of an extension of the podcast. On the podcast, I answer a lot of questions from the internet that people ask. And uh, this is your chance of being a little part of that. This is your chance of throwing your hat in the ring. I, uh, I just recorded a Patreon episode. I think the link to that is in the description where uh, I got a question about a woman who was trying to move into an apartment, right? With her two friends. And her two friends didn't have enough money or didn't have like as much money as her. So they just ended up moving into a, like, like agreeing to move into a place without her and tried roping her into it. It was awesome. I love that. I love, I, you know, people are very negative about the internet. And I, I agree with that. I understand why you would be negative about the internet. It's a horrible cesspool of the most unhappy people in the entire world. But that can be pretty interesting. And I don't think we can deny that. I don't think there's any denying that the internet, for all the shortcomings, for the fact that it's uh, destroying our brains and bodies and leaving us as shells of people, it is pretty interesting. Dan, I'm a targeted individual, so it's hard. Does that mean that you work at Target? Because if it does, you're right. That is a pretty hard life. That's a difficult life. Nat, how you doing? Good to see you. Nat is a regular here on the chat. I was wondering if anybody here has any questions, comments, or concerns. Please throw them in the chat. I'm ready to answer. I got nothing but dishes and time right now. Hi, what's the reasons for you to be at Ed? Are you talking about special ed? Because, boy, there are a lot of reasons. <laughs> I was in special ed growing up. I assume that's what this question is referring to. Um, I had a lot of reasons. Uh, emotional problems. Which is just, that's just what they say to kids where they're like, we don't, we don't know what's going on here. We're going to say emotional problems and put you with kids who, uh, who have, like, severe autism. It's very crazy the way that they like they do special ed in public schools because they're just like, yeah, we got one room for you guys. We're going to just kind of toss you in. We're going to just kind of throw you. You know what will make you better? Putting you with a bunch of other really troubled kids. Um, but I, I was also in there for dyslexia, dysgraphia. I had a lot of stuff. I, I was in there for a very long time. Uh, boy, did they not cure me. Boy, do I remain uncured, folks. Uh, just a question. It, let me know in the chat. Has anyone here been in special ed? We got any... Uh, we got any uh, any ed heads in the chat? Let me know. Let me know. I, 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 I'm very interested in people's uh, connection to special education. Matt, who's a teacher, uh, says all of her kids are special ed, but some of them are just emotional. Um, and you know what? I think it's good. I think we should, if you're, if you're emotional as a child, I mean, can you think of anything that as unnatural as being a child with emotions? How disgusting is that? How gross is that? That's terrible. We got to get rid of those kids. You know what I mean? Get them out of here. Replace them with robots. That's what you want from kids. Um, no, of course. Of course you mean emotional disabilities. I, I understand that. But I do feel like there were some kids in my special ed who uh, who were just like emotional or just kind of like unfocused in general, not necessarily to a pathological level. But the teachers were just like, eh, I'm annoyed. I'm annoyed with you guys. <laughs> I mean... Of course there's going to be kids that end up in special education that don't belong in there. Teachers get paid like $20,000 a year. If you make their jobs hard and they're making $20,000 a year, yeah, they're just going to send you to the place where you don't bother them anymore. Of course that's going to happen. It's unfortunate, but it's true. I think a way of... Uh, 
of maybe mitigating that is paying teachers more than you would play, pay an average fast food employee. You know, not that the fast food employee doesn't deserve some money too. They deserve a little bit more money. But I feel like on the hierarchy of needs, raising our children's youth is pretty high up there. Pretty up there, folks. I was also playing with this idea recently. I thought of this, and this is a bit of a tangent, but that's what this is for. Um, have you noticed that the only social, pro the only program that the government figured out in this country that really works is parking enforcement? That, I, oof. I'm going to get a little mad here. I'm going to get a little mad here. I'm not mad at you folks. I'm mad at the situation that I'm in. I got a parking ticket, right? Did I, I don't know. Did I park a little bit wrong? We don't know. We don't know. We're not sure. Okay. We're not sure. But I challenge the ticket. I go in to challenge the ticket because I don't really have the money to pay for the ticket. I show up to this place. First of all, they sit me down in a room. The parking enforcement agent took pictures of my car and the surrounding area. Why does no other governmental agency work in this country other than parking enforcement? Why is parking enforcement like the Green Berets in this country? Why? Why did we figure that one out? Why did we figure out the one agency in this country that screws us over? And we can't get trains. We can't get buses. But the parking enforcement is like the FBI and the CIA all wrapped up in once. It's disgusting. It's disgusting. We can't, we can't fund public schools. We can't get subways where people aren't constantly trying to bite us. But we have the best parking enforcement in the world. If you park in the... If, oh, if you ask for a doctor... If you have Medi-Cal or Medicaid and you ask for a doctor, it's going to take two and a half weeks to see that doctor. If you park in the red by two inches for five minutes, you get a ticket on your car. Unbelievable. Unbelievable what we've done to ourselves. They're so good and they're so mean. They're so mean. And I understand why they're mean. It's because everybody hates them. But maybe we shouldn't be, maybe we should let them be a little bit more relaxed, right? Maybe we should let them be a little bit more, maybe, maybe staying at a meter for five extra minutes isn't the biggest crime in the world, right? But it, it pisses me off, folks. It pisses me off when nothing in this country works except parking enforcement. Nothing in this park in this country works except for park. You call nine one one. You call nine one one for an ambulance. It's going to take twenty minutes for that ambulance to show up. If you stay at a meter for two extra minutes, you have five tickets on your car when you get back. Make that make sense. Make it make sense, folks. Unreal, unbelievable. I got to make a video about that because it makes me so mad. It pisses me off so hard. And by the way, and I mean this, and this is maybe part of a joke, but maybe part of truth. Expensive cars get worse tickets. Okay? When are we gonna when are we gonna change that? Okay? You drive around in a two hundred thousand dollar car, you get ticketed more. You drive around in a dumb car, a dumb cheap car like mine, you get less. You get less of a ticket, okay? We gotta scale. We gotta scale our tickets in this country. You're gonna put a $75 ticket on a $300 car? Make that make sense to me. Make that make sense to me, folks. Cause it's, it's unreal, okay? The carism in this country is unreal. Cause you want to know why? Cause if I, if I back up, if I, if I'm parallel parking, what you have to do, it's a very hard city to drive around in and they didn't figure out the public transit. So you have to kind of drive around if you really want to get around places. So that just follow me on this line of logic. So you've made it very difficult to do anything but driving. So I have to drive around. 
And because I drive around, I have to parallel park. If I parallel park and I bump into, I don't know, a Ford Fiesta, I'll give that guy 20 bucks. He'll have 15 left over after he makes the repairs. But if I parallel park, same situation, same accident, but there's a, you just decided to drive a dumbass $200,000 Mercedes and I bump into your car and you see it, now I have to pay $2,000 because you decided to be a prick? No, no, we're getting rid of that. That's done. After you pay a certain amount for your car, other people don't have to pay when that you get into an accident, even if it's my fault. And I know that's going to be unpopular, but you decided to drive. If, if you were driving a $50,000 car even, which that's a nice car, that's understandable. I'll make the repairs. Twenty. You decided to drive around in a house? Yeah, that's on you, dude. You decided to drive around in the house. You decided to drive around in the house. Did you learn to parallel park in Cali or New England? In, uh, in New England. I learned how to parallel park in New England. I parallel park very well, but if you have to parallel park five times a day like you do in Los Angeles, you're gonna bump a car. It's just gonna happen. It's just gonna happen. And if you drive around in some fragile sports car, that's that's on you. I'll give you I'll give you a little bit of money. I don't have to I don't have to pay everything. That that's that's horseshit. I recently accidentally in a parking incident i backed up into a porsche made a mistake we all make mistakes in life you know what i had to pay a thousand dollars and this was a small bump nothing nothing frame wise no no damage on the frame of the car literally just a paint scratch and a little divot disgusting disgusting i hate that Anyone, let me know in the chat, has anyone here ever made a really bad driving mistake that uh, that resulted in you having to pay a bunch of money? Because I, I one time, uh, another time I backed up, and this was like four years ago, I backed up into a, uh, a nice car. It might have been like a Corvette or something, and I left a note on the Corvette, like I left a note on the, uh, on the Porsche. I left a note on the Corvette. I said, hey, I'm sorry, here's my number, I'll pay for the damages. You know what happened? Do you know what happened? And by the way, nice, nice Porsche. Or a nice, nice Corvette. The guy calls me. He goes, hey, man, I got your note. And I was like, oh, no, I was sweating. I was like, oh, this guy's going to screw me over. I'm screwed. I'm effed, whatever. He goes, oh, yeah, dude, you're fine. It was a little scratch, but I'll pay for it. You know why it makes sense? That's a very nice guy. I am not downplaying his generosity. But you know why that makes sense? Because he's driving around in an $80,000 car. So it makes sense he would have like $200 laying around to make a little repair. And it's not that big of a deal for him. Yet, yeah, I don't know why insurance didn't cover it. Listen, I, I left a note on the Porsche's car. This isn't me saying I wouldn't leave a note and that I'm not a good guy. I do believe in, in karma. Um, I'm a big karma guy. So... I'll leave a note on the car, which I did with this guy. Left a note. He ended up calling me and being like, hey, you scratched my car. I'm going to go get it fixed. You're going to pay for it. I said, fair. I made the mistake. But in the back of my head, I'm like, you're the one who's driving a Porsche. Nat has a car story. Um, oh, but first, hey, Dan, I have to run, but I just wanted to say I hope you're super famous and pack out the world's biggest comedy venue. Appreciate that SR space R. That means a lot to me. Uh, in my pursuit of fame, if you want to help, just hit that subscribe button and watch the videos. That's all you can do for now. And I'll come to your city and come to a show. But I appreciate you even just watching this. Uh, Nat, ran over a stone in the highway that flung off a truck going to uh, the Cape and totaled my car. Oh, no. Oh. Oh. See, that kind of, uh, you know, I have a similar story. Um, I was driving a friend to the airport, being a nice guy. Being a nice, being just a nice guy. Drove my friend to the airport. I was behind this truck. A, uh, a piece of gravel flew from the truck into my, uh, into my windshield. Um, 
the truck then uh, exited before I could get its license plate because I was thinking about maybe being like, hey, blah, blah, blah. Uh, not that I don't think that would help, right? I don't think that would help, but why not? Um, $500. Went through my windshield. $500. Just like that. Just like that. You can't avoid it. That's why we should that's why we should have public transit, folks. That's why we should have trains and buses. Oh, cars are freedom. You know what's freedom? Walking around and not worrying about where you parked. That's freedom. Oh, cars are freedom. Shut up, idiot. You know what's freedom? You ever been to New York? You ever been to New York? And the subways in New York need work by the way. They're not perfect by any means. I'm not sitting here saying they, they are. But when you go to New York, and also, it, it, uh, it costs a million dollars to live in New York. There's a lot of issues, right? But when you can hop on a train, get off that train, walk to where you need to be. I used to live in Sweden. Oh, oh, the buses, the bike lanes. We're idiots. Not in, not in everything. I'm not like a all America is bad kind of guy. That I really don't don't feel that way. But when it comes to transportation, we let auto lobbies screw us in this country. We let auto lobbies absolutely bend us over, and it is a tragedy that we did that because we could have such good public transit in this country. And we just don't do it. We just don't do it. The country that can do everything, the country that can do anything, the country that prides itself on innovation has a transportation system from like the, the 1980, 1985 and all we can do is add another lane. No, I agree with you. Pa Patience, Mary 88. That's a great comment. You don't have to be like America is bad to admit other places have better systems. I feel like that's um, what makes America great, folks, is the fact that we can look at other systems and we can go, let's integrate that into ours. Or at least that's what did make America. And now we're all like, oh, don't let don't let anyone in here. Don't let anyone new in here. Blah, blah, blah. That's what made us the country that we are is like innovation and conversations with other groups of people. And now we're trying to, like, close the borders. Dumb asses. Dumb asses. God, it pisses me off. Anyway, sorry. This is a this is a fiery one. I'm gonna try to uh, I'm gonna try to lighten the mood. Um, I'll pin this message right here. Um, AC said, "Why did you live uh, or why did you live in Sweden?" I was in college. I had a little mental health episode, and I decided while I was in a, a track and field season, I would go to the uh, travel abroad thing, and. Uh, I was just like, where can you send me? They said, do you want to go to Sweden? I was like, yeah. Left the school without really telling anyone. <laughs> it's pretty crazy. Pretty out there. Pretty nuts. But it was fun. It worked. It worked out. I came back. They kicked me off the track team. I started stand-up comedy. That's life. That's life. Sometimes it's really bad. Sometimes life is really bad. But that one worked out. That one worked out pretty well. I'm pretty happy with how that one went. Um, yeah, I uh, Sweden was great, by the way. I loved it. Um, it was a little too nice for me, to be honest with you. What I learned being a uh, being a stupid American is uh, I need a little bit more turmoil than that. And it's so funny because Sweden, like. There's a lot of conservatives in Sweden that are like, oh my God, these immigrants are coming over and doing all this bad. I'm like, guys, you have no idea where you live. You have no frame of reference. You have no concept of what like a life is. It's so, but I, I like America. I'll be honest, I like living here. I don't, I don't think I would live in another country. Um, and it's because I'm crazy and America is a country for crazy people. America is a country for people whose brains don't work 
and uh, and the people who are forced to be here by the people whose brains don't work. That's what this country, which I am one of them. It's very, it's very strange, very difficult to understand. But, uh, but I, uh, yeah, I do. I, I, um, I, I live in Los Angeles, California now, which uh, I am about to go out and drive. But uh, again, thank you for joining the live. I hope you appreciate this. Get in the comments, let me know how I can make this better. Should I make it longer? Should I make it shorter? Should I do this more? Should I do this less? Um, if you like the live, please check out the podcast. I would really appreciate it. Please subscribe to the channel. Check out the Patreon because I do a live Q&A on the Patreon. Sometimes I answer your questions on the Patreon. It's $5 a month. Uh, so if you enjoy the free uh, podcast, maybe check it out. If not, I will continue to put out the uh, the free episodes. And uh, as always, I appreciate you all much. Thank you so much. Have a good one.